Right everyone, today we're going to be talking about mods. Probably the most important thing to make a team function properly. This is going to be a guide on how to effectively farm, level and slice mods and how to choose which mods to invest in and which mods to throw in the trash. The advice in this guide is what I personally do. Others probably have different rules they go by but the general points that we'll be covering should apply to anyone who's looking for some guidance on how to manage their inventory of mods. So each mod is going to have a primary stat and four secondary stats once leveled to 12. These stats are determined purely by chance and one of the secondary stats is increased by random for each colour level it has or gains from slicing. They progress from grey to green to blue to purple then to yellow and finally can be sliced to 6 star to gain a small boost to all secondary stats as well as a varied boost to the primary depending on the stat. So that means each mod, if taken to yellow, has 4 boosts to its secondary stats. But I'd say about 90% of the time, the only secondary stat you're going to be monitoring is speed. Your goal when working with mods the majority of the time is to try and increase the speed of the mod as much as possible. Mods that are 4 star or below are generally not worth keeping at all, unless it has a bit of speed on, as they cannot be sliced, so only focus on the 5 star mods. The primary stats on mods are very limited for the most part. Squares will always be offense, diamonds will always be defense, circles will be either health or protection, crosses can be either offense, tenacity, health, protection, potency or defense, triangles can be critical chance, critical damage, offense, health, protection or defense, and finally arrows can have speed, defense, accuracy, health, critical avoidance, protection or offense. It's also worth keeping in mind that a mod's secondary stats cannot be the same as its primary. For example, let's look at a circle with health on it. Now because the primary of that mod is health, but it's a percentage, you won't be able to get health percentage as a secondary on that mod. However, you will be able to get the numerical health, as this is counted by the game as a different stat to health percentage, even though they both boost health. Next up, we're going to talk about mod sets. Each mod will belong to a set and combining either two or four of the same mod set on a character will offer a boost to the stats provided by the set bonus. First of all, I'm going to tell you about the mods that become a set when two of the same are on each character. First of all, we have Health, which gives a 10% boost to Health per set. Defense, which gives a 25% boost per set. Critical Chance, which gives an 8% boost per set. Tenacity, which gives a 20% Tenacity boost per set. And finally, Potency, which gives a 15% boost per set. Given these mods only require two to make a set is really helpful. So you should really utilise this to give your characters as much boost to their stats as possible. However, sometimes it's okay to ignore some of these sets, especially when your primary goal is to push out as much speed as possible on your mods. Another thing I forgot to mention is these sets do stack. So for example, you could have 6 health mods on a character, which in turn would give you 3 health set bonuses, which would give you a total boost of 30% health just from the sets alone. Next up, we have mods that require four of the same set on each character to activate the bonus. There are only three of these, which are critical damage, which gives 30% boost per set, offense, which gives a 15% boost per set, and finally speed, which gives a 10% boost per set. Out of these three, the most common one you're going to need is speed, given that most characters in the game rely on this stat to perform at the best. So make sure to make a speed set if speed is the only stat that matters to that particular character. Another thing to note is all mods in a set must be leveled to 15 to get the full boost. If any are under 15, the boost will be halved, so be sure to make sure all your mods you're planning to use are level 15 before placing them on a character. Level 15 is also needed to slice a mod, but more on that later on. There's also a few mods where you need to do your best to match the mod sets to the primary stats, such as a crit damage set triangle with a crit damage primary on it, or a potency set cross with a potency primary on it. For example, if you have a critical damage set triangle, you're going to want to make sure that mod has a critical damage primary, as chances are you're trying to stack your critical damage stat as much as possible. So having a protection primary on a critical damage set triangle is going to be pretty useless. That being said, if it had a high enough speed secondary, you could probably find use for it on a character that relies solely on speed, if you already have a speed set on them. So you may still be able to find use for mods like this, if it has a high enough speed. Okay, so let's talk about the ways we can farm mods. First of all, we've got the mod challenges. 
Generally, the majority of characters in the game are going to need either speed, health, crit chance, crit damage, or offense mods. Defense, tenacity, and potency mods are rarely needed on characters at all, so it's alright just to farm them as you need them rather than creating a stockpile. Personally, I would stick to farming speed, crit damage, crit chance, and offense mods from here, because the mod heist will provide a steady flow of health mods, often with really strong starting stats, but we'll talk more about that later on. When farming mods, you're going to get a lot of grey types. If you're rich, then hold on to these for the most part, but if you struggle with credits, then you may want to sell these, as you're going to be getting a ton of them. And while they can amount to an amazing mod in the end, they're going to require the most resources to build. Farming mods from here does require mod energy, which has a shared use with farming salvage, but there'll be more on that later on. When farming mods from here, you're always going to want to do the third mission on each set, as these are the only ones that award 5 dot mods. The second way to obtain mods is from the mod store. Now to access this, you need to go onto any other shop and scroll along and click on this icon here. The mod store is pretty underrated overall. I absolutely love this place and it's given me some of my strongest mods. It can be a little pricey, but the benefit here is you know to a degree what you're paying for. I usually purchase any 5 star mod with a decent speed secondary from here. But again, if you're low on credits, look for a specific mod and primary you need with a starting secondary speed stat of 5. I personally would buy a 4-2, but probably not a 3 unless it had a primary and a set I was really looking for. Another thing to take note of is the reset cost here is really cheap. It only costs 15 crystals, so if you're desperate for some stronger mods, it might be worth doing this from time to time to see what the shop has to offer. The third main way to acquire mods is from the Smuggler's Run event, or Mod Heist as I like to call it. This event has a similar timetable to the Credit Heists, but I cannot stress this enough, build a team for this event. You get a nice amount of salvage and a lot of free health set mods each time the event rolls around. Often the mods from this are purple or yellow with speed secondaries, so it's really worth building a team for. Be sure to make sure you can beat the third tier of this event, as that's where you're really going to start seeing the benefits of your investment. To do this event, you're going to need a team of smugglers, which do have some really underrated characters such as Kira and Bandor Chewie, but not to worry because you're easily able to beat the event with characters such as Raidhorn, Chewbacca and Nest, which are characters everyone should either have or be gearing anyway. To play the third tier, you need to have five six star smugglers. So make sure you're working on getting these requirements met so you can do this amazing event. You can also obtain mods from mythic events and sometimes from the assault battle type events as well. So if you have access to these, be sure to complete them when they cycle around as they give yellow and purple mods, often with a speed secondary. Okay, so now you have some mods. The next part of the process is leveling them up. Now keep in mind, not all mods are gonna be worth investing in. Arrows are only worth leveling if they are primary speed. There are some exceptions to this, but in general, almost every character in the game is going to need an arrow with primary speed on it. So focus mainly on these and maybe keep a few CA, offense, protection and health primary arrows for the very few characters who may need them in the future. In terms of everything else, you're going to want to go by the following rules. Now each time a mod goes up 3 levels until it hits level 12, it's going to either reveal a stat, or if all stats are revealed, increase a stat. Now grey mods will reveal 4 stats once leveled to 12, but with greys you will only reveal the 4 stats, none of these will increase unless you slice it. I personally level my greys to 12 because I have more than enough credits to do this, but I know a lot of you guys are still feeling the credit crunch, so you might be better either selling most of these if they don't have a rare primary like offense on a cross or crit damage on a triangle. For those of you like me who want to work with these, it's really simple. Level them to 12. If speed is revealed, hold on to it. If no speed is revealed on the secondary, then sell it as it's likely garbage at this point. Next up, we have green mods. These will reveal 3 stats and boost 1 once leveled to 12. To unlock all 4 stats with these, you only need to level it to 9. Same rule as before, if you level it to 9 and no speed is revealed, sell the mod. If speed is revealed, level it to 12 and hope for a boost. The thing is with mods is 90% of the time you're just looking for speed on the secondaries. And once you've stockpiled a few mods, you're going to get to the point where you can't farm anymore because your mod inventory is full. This is a major annoyance in the game and the only way to combat this is to sell junk mods that you don't need anymore. So be sure to keep on top of this so it doesn't become a constant problem in your day to day life. Next up we have blue mods. 
These guys will reveal two stats and boost two stats once leveled to 12. To unlock all four stats, you only need to level these guys to six. As usual, once leveled to six, if no speed is visible, sell the mod. If speed has appeared, increase it to 12 and enjoy the possibility of a double speed boost. This is usually the point where you will start thinking how much slicing you want to invest into this mod. If a double speed boost has happened, you're almost certainly going to want to continue developing this mod, but more on that later on. Okay, so now we're moving on to purple mods. These will reveal one stat and boost free once leveled to 12. You only need to level it to free to unlock all the stats on these. After leveling it, if there's no speed, sell it. If speed is there, level it to 12 and hope for a triple boost. At this point, if the speed does not increase at all, it might not be worth it to you anymore. As a purple with 5 speed or less maxed out doesn't have much use to most people, unless you're really just looking for literally anything with a speed secondary on, for some of those less vital teams. Personally, I would not slice a purple that had 5 speed on it unless it had a rare primary I was desperate for. With yellow mods, it's really simple here. If there's no speed on it, you don't need to level it at all, just sell it right away. If speed is on it, level it to 12 and hope for some boosts. Now I'd like to say that these rules for leveling are for the 90% of the time where your only interest is secondary speed. There are cases where you're looking for other qualities other than speed, and for these mods you're going to want to ignore the advice I've just given you or reapply it to whatever other secondaries you're trying to get. Now back to the yellow mods. Once you have leveled it to 12 and if no speed has increased, you're probably going to want to sell it unless, like I mentioned earlier, you're really just desperate for mods with any speed on for some of your weaker characters, as it's likely not going to be worth slicing them at all. The next thing we're going to talk about is slicing. To slice a mod, you need a variety of purple salvage pieces. These can be obtained primarily from the mod battles on the ninth stage of the battles. However, they're also available from the aforementioned Smuggler's Run event, Grand Arena Rewards and HSIF. To put a mod to 6C, you need an additional salvage piece, which is the gold one. These can be obtained from Grand Arena, the Shard Shop and the Guild Store. Be sure to try and keep a supply of everything ready, so when you get a mod you want to work on, you already have everything you need ready to use. Personally, I always focus on slicing over farming, if I have mods that are worth slicing that is. However, if you don't have many mods, or any that are worth improving, it might be better to keep farming new ones with your mod energy for a while. Also, keep in mind that each slicing level will use different types of purple mod salvage, so you're going to need to farm different types for different colour slices. Each time you successfully slice a mod, it goes up to the next colour. So for example, if you slice a green mod, it will become a blue. You can then slice that mod again to become purple, and so forth. Each time you slice a mod, it gains a boost to one of its secondary stats at random. Okay, so moving on to the actual slicing. For slicing, I follow a simple rule. If a mod gets to purple and it's not 9 to 10 speed on the secondary, I won't take it any further. The reason being is, if I don't have a chance to end up with at least plus 15 speed, it's not worth investing in for me. So if a mod loses the potential to do this, I would not waste any more resources slicing it, unless it had a very rare primary I was desperate for. When I'm working on mods, I generally start with mods that are a low colour but a high speed. For example, if I have a green mod that has plus 10 speed, I'm going to prioritise that over a blue mod with 10 speed. This is because you should always be looking to improve the mods with the most potential to become a god mod, which to me is a mod that can achieve 20 speed or higher. Alright, next up is 6 star mods. As I mentioned earlier on, when you slice a yellow mod, it will become a 6 star mod. This will give a boost to its primary stat and a boost to all the secondaries. Percentage based secondaries get a massive boost compared to numerical secondaries, so having high percentage based secondary stats is always a nice benefit for mods you're planning to 6 star. Speed will always get a plus 1 boost on the secondaries for those who may be interested. These boosts are guaranteed and are never RNG based, so once you get to this level you don't have to worry about bad luck anymore. I personally only 6 star mods that have 14 speed or higher, unless I'm desperate for the primary stat on that specific mod. This is because 6 star in mods takes a lot of resources and can only be used by characters who are both 7 star and gear 12. You're only going to want to invest to this level in really strong mods that are designed to be on your best teams to begin with. 6 star in mods that don't have very good stats is just going to be a massive waste of time and resources. Both of which, if saved, could have been spent on a mod that was going to benefit you a lot more and for a lot longer. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the increases given to primary stats when a mod is taken to 6 star. 
Keep in mind when taking mods to 6 star that certain primaries will increase a lot more than others. Remember the image on screen is for primary stat increases not the secondaries. If you take a look at the increases you're going to notice that certain primaries benefit a lot more than others. Health for example gains little over 10% whereas protection only gains 0.5%. This means in most cases, 6 star health primaries are going to be a lot better than protection primaries. On any team where protection regeneration is not consistent of course. There's no single rule that fits all, so be sure to read a character's kit before deciding what primary stats are best for them. The primary boosts on most of these stats are very significant to how your teams will perform in endgame content. So make sure your top teams have strong 6 star mods. It's very important if you want to get the most out of your teams. As I mentioned earlier on, mod storage does become a massive problem in the game rather quickly. While this can be combated by using characters to store mods on, including characters you don't use very often, the most important way to free up space is to sell your mods. Personally, I sell any mod without speed on, or yellows that have 5 speed or less. You may also want to sell purples with less than 5 speed too, as to me these are pretty useless and are not going to be needed on any of my characters. Again though, I have to say, there are exceptions to this, but this is the general rule. If you do need help sorting through your mods, swgoh.gg has some really nice tools for doing this, so be sure to check that out if you don't know about it already. Well, that's everything for today everyone. I hope you enjoyed my in-depth guide on mods, and hopefully you learned a lot of useful information today about how to improve your quantity and quality of mods for your teams. As you probably noticed, my RNG when I was leveling and slicing my mods today was terrible. And this is something you're all going to have to accept and power through on your own accounts. Mods is probably the most RNG element in this game, which is why it's so important to focus your efforts on the right mods. As always everyone, please like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. And even drop into my Discord server if you have any further questions. The link to that will be in the description. Have a great day everyone, and I'll see you all very soon.